But I'd like to start our discussion off uh, with Khaled here. Um, it, we really can't talk about process development unless we really understand the molecules, right, that we're working on and how our process influences those and, and vice versa. So, you know, you've been really involved in, in the USP guidelines uh, for mRNA quality. And I'd really like to get your sense, you know, we just celebrated the, the, the release of the third edition of the mRNA uh, quality, vaccine quality guidelines. So I'd like to get a sense of how you've seen the, these guidelines evolving from version one to version three today. And, and what do you think these evolutions are, are, are really telling us about where the space is as a whole in terms of what we know? right, about our, our linear mRNA products. Thank you for having me today, and I truly appreciate it. So the the USP chapter, the very first version that came out, it was a collection of the nation of methods that was given by industry and collaboration, and some of it from academia also. Um, that was just to put something together to give some guidelines. And also USP did the work to apply certain design, uh, quality by design measures to identify the CQAs. You know, what is important to test and they honed on that. Uh, the nice thing about, about it is that was open for comments. So the flood of comments was huge which <laughs> triggered the second edition. And now the third edition is pretty comprehensive. If, if you look at it, for every attribute, there's at least one or two tests, which is allow labs to, to use what they have to test it. And they're not you know, pigeonholed in a box that this is the only way this is gonna go. And that's why it's been called guidelines as a, and also a general chapter, it's not a monograph. So it have evolved quite a bit and the third chapter also some of the methods were verified so okay. what i mean by that is it's been ran in the usp labs to make sure you're getting the right results with a certain um, assay standards that they identified and and now usp is kicking it in a higher gear where they establish the expert panel for best practice for mrna and the the goal of that panel is to uh finalize a general chapter that would be published, which is going to take some time because all the methods will be, you know, validated at different labs, you know, mm -hmm. to set the standards. Now, having said that, the, this mRNA modality is moving at the speed of light, and everybody <laughs> is having a hard time catching up. So yes, this the, the chapter has been focused mainly on non-amplified mRNA. Some of the method mm -hmm. could be used for self-amplified, but Okay. We still need to look at circular. You know, there's a lot of other aspects that he have to be added. And that's something, mm -hmm. you know, they will it'll continue working as a collaboration with industry, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to get that done. So it's really exciting. And one of the challenges is the nonstop evolution of the analytical methods. There's always a mm -hmm. new thing that came up or some bridging from different modality that people are using to apply it for mRNA. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and that is, that's, that for me, this is really interesting. And that's how you leverage knowledge from previous work to, to here. So perfect example is field flow fractionation with MALS detection that was used long time ago to characterize BSA and, and particles. And now it's making its way to mRNA, and I think it's very exciting, very exciting, and it's uh, very, very important. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, you you moderated a USP panel earlier this year on on quality and, and some of the analytics, right, and tools that we're using to analyze. And one of my favorite statements from that event to, to this day remains that we really are trying to kind of push that envelope, right, and figure out ways that we can bring in new, uh, new methods into our, into our characterization work, our understanding of mRNA. And there were so many different presenters that, that day that had, you know, here are sort of the methods that are recommended today, but here's what we're also exploring, right? And I thought that that was a really um, beautiful demonstration of, of just how much still there is to figure out and, and learn. 
And, and there is one area that I, I'm trying to advocate for is orthogonal methods, you know, mm-hmm. and th- they have to be from a different uh, methodology. So that way, the answer that you're getting from from your method is actually true if you test it with a different methodology. So, you know, that's what happened in previous modalities, whether it's small molecules or proteins. And I think that's going to be essential for mRNA to for people to actually start venturing into orthogonal methods to ensure that they have the proper analytical methods and the pro- proper reporting results, you know, to support their yeah. uh, their process and their product. 